Hey guys, Pit Master here. I'm here with Vato and we're gonna talk about Sensei UFC. Even though we're gonna talk about Bellator. So basically it's Sensei, Sensei Bellator, but since I already have it written down as Sensei UFC, I'm just gonna stick with it, all right? Um, I watched it this weekend. I guess there was a fight Friday and Saturday. I did not know that, but I did know about the, uh, the uh, Chael Sonnen fight with, uh, with Fedor, and that's the one I really wanted to watch. So I watched some of it. I, I really wanted to just watch that one, but I saw a couple things I want to bring up. All right, number one, the Chael Sonnen uh, Fedor fight. First of all, nothing but respect, nothing for both of them. But, I mean, you gotta admit, I mean, Chael is a small 205er, if that. I mean, he could make 185. But he went all the way up to heavyweight. How many guys are gonna do that? And then fight someone like Fedor? I mean, that's, that's like, that's what you call brave on top of brave. I mean, he's going in the cage as a 185, 205 or at the most, to fight one of the greatest heavyweights most feared heavyweights of all times. How many people are gonna do that? <laughs> not many. Not many normal people would do it, and not many fighters would do it. Okay. The fight was crazy, and it, it kind of showed the weight difference because Fedor just kind of manhandled him a lot. But in one position, Shale got on top, and he was in a good half guard position. And he was doing a little bit of damage, not much. The kind of stuff that uh, Randy Couture used to do. He would do a little bit of damage, then it would start building, and he would just keep going. Because he has you trapped, locked in, on that side control or half guard position. And you're safe there, and you're okay there, and you're, you're not getting hurt, and you're doing a little bit of damage, and you're winning the round because you're in top position. But then, like, before he even hurt Fedor, and Fedor wasn't even tired or anything, he decided to pass and go into full mount. And that's the position where you can do a lot more damage, but you can also get reversed. You get reversed a lot easier from, from full mount than you do from half guard. And so he went from half guard to full mount and instantly got reversed. And then all of a sudden, Fedor, Fedor was on top of him. And you don't want Fedor on top of you. So the only like thing I'd have to say to that is, in a real fight, street fight, or in the cage, if you have a good position, unless you've already hurt your opponent and you wanna like step over and finish him, or you, you feel like he's that tired and you wanna step over and finish him, if you're in a good position, but you can't get as much punishment in, like you can get more punishment in from a mount, than you can from a half guard or a, or, a, or a side control because you're closer, so you don't have as much room to bang. But you do, you are you are more stable there. So if you're fighting someone like Fedor and you have a superior position, even though you're not doing considerable damage, stay there. <laughs> stay there and try to hurt him if you can, but don't put yourself in such a vulnerable position. That, that was the one. Okay, other fight that I want to go over was uh, a guy named Maine versus Corrales. Okay, Maine versus Corrales. Now, that fight showed me two things. Number one, Corrales kept hitting Maine on the inside leg. He was a southpaw. Okay, so he kept kicking Maine's inside leg, right? And it, it, was, it was hurting. But two things you have to realize. When you kick the inside of the leg, it doesn't do as much damage as the outside. There's a lot more musculature here, it's a lot denser here, and there's a lot more nerves here. This will affect your mobility on the outside more than the inside, okay? I'm not saying it doesn't hurt on the inside and it doesn't cause some damage, but the outside causes more damage. But if you're fighting someone the opposite orientation than you, in other words, you're regular, orthodox, and they're southpaw, your front leg doesn't do much damage here because it's forward, right? Now, if, you, if he switched to southpaw, now he could kick the outside of my leg with a lot of power. But if you're switched, the best chance you have is the inside leg. Boom. 
So it can hurt, but let me tell you the danger of that. And you can ask Anderson Silva about this, all right? Sometimes when you're kicking the inside, I'm gonna show from a little farther so you can see this. When you're, if someone's kicking the inside of your leg over and over, right, it hurts, and it's eventually gonna take its toll, okay? So what you need to do is either hold it here and point it in, and let them kick your knee or even the top part, it's, it's more solid so they won't feel as free to kick you. Because if he's kicking you and catching you right here all the time, he's just gonna start kicking harder and harder because it doesn't hurt him at all. But if you start turning your knee in, right, like Chris Weidman did against Anderson Silva, he's gonna hurt his kicking leg, either break it or it will at least discourage him. Okay, so that was the that was the uh, the uh, Corrales uh, main fight, and that was Corrales doing all the kicks. Another thing Corrales did really well was he set up his left hook by just putting his right hand out there, right. So instead of like pulling this back or, or you know setting it up in a different way, he set it up in a really good way. He just stuck his right hand here, and when you stick your right hand there. It not only ties up your opponent, right, and keeps his attention elsewhere, but you're also cocking your left hook so you can throw it even harder. So we kind of stuck it out here and then just threw this right left hook really hard, and that's what knocked uh, uh, Maine out. So that's a really good way. Like you just throw this right, right hand out. Right, and then even if you're not trying to hurt your opponent, it automatically cocks your left hook and it keeps your opponent busy, right? It ties them up, so you're here and then power, right? So straight right and then come back with the power. So you're fighting the guy, you're just putting this out here and then that split second later, boom, come back with the left hook. It's your uh, hook reset. It's the hook reset. You always want to reset with the left hook. Anytime you throw something with your backhand, you always want to reset with the front end. That's what we got this week. Thanks for coming. Please make sure you uh, subscribe, share, tell all your friends. They can be a better martial artist if they watch Sensei UFC. Thanks, guys.